Hey, welcome back to the How to Podcast series. It's Dave with you. I hope you are doing spectacular today. Awesome and such. I <laughs> uh, want to talk a little bit today about um, something that I've been hearing a lot of talk about and wanted to give my shot at show notes. Your What goes with your podcast when you send it out into the world? We're going to talk all things show notes here on the How to Podcast series. Are you ready? Take note. Here we go. Thanks for joining me. Hey, so I'm hearing a lot of people chatting about show notes. Now, these are that's the information that you would include with your podcast when you upload it to your media host. That's all that information from your podcast that would be helpful to your listener as they are busy doing whatever they're doing and they don't have a piece of paper and a pen with them as they listen to your show how you can keep track of the content and give them a synopsis, a summary, uh, with any action steps that you've talked about in the podcast, any website addresses, that kind of stuff. That's what we're talking about when we talk about show notes. Um, And it's something completely different than what we would call a transcription. And we're going to do a different episode on transcriptions. And I have an interesting point of view from one of my guests on a different podcast. Uh, His name is Dave. He's blind, been blind since birth. And he gave me some amazing information about what blind people need from podcasters in show notes, on your website, so that they can participate in your podcast. So that's a different episode coming up on transcripts and transcriptions. That is really important. And... um, I hear a lot of gurus out there uh, putting transcriptions down and arrogantly putting them down as if it's an option. Anyways, I'm going to get off on my topic there in another episode. So anyways, I got lots to say about that, especially for any guru out there that you hear that puts transcriptions down quickly run for the exit. That is the wrong guru for you. They don't know what they're talking about. So anyways, that's my opinion on that. Moving on. Show notes are something I want to chat about today, and I've got 10 things to consider when talking about your show notes, and uh, I'm going to jump into that right here in a moment. We're just after, Before we do that, I want to remind everybody that if you have an Amazon device, Hi there. you can now access the Daily Dave as a daily briefing on your device. Uh, we're also releasing it on YouTube as shorts. And we're also, it's available as a podcast. And they're like three to five minute episodes. And it's a daily tip called the Daily Dave. And we're putting podcasting tips on a device near you. So you can hear these tips and put them into practice right away. So if you're interested, how to podcast.ca. And as well, just jump onto your device. Hi there. If I say the name, it'll kick it in, right? So you could jump onto your device, go to your, your daily briefings. And you can search for the Daily Dave, and it's right there. Add it to your, add it to your device. <laughs> I gotta say, it, device again. Hi there. So that you can have the Daily Dave with you every day, with your when you're having your coffee or what have you. So let's jump into ten things to consider when thinking about your show notes. All right, here we go. Number one, your show notes is basically an episode summary, and what you need to do here is write a concise an attention-grabbing overview of the episode's content. Okay, it's an overview. It's not word for word. It's an overview. Okay, you're not giving all the content here. You're keeping it short. And in some of our um, places where you're going to be posting this information, there's a character limit to how many how many letters you can actually, and characters you can put into your post. So don't go crazy here, but just give an overview of your content. And number two, timestamps are amazing for a podcast that maybe has multiple topics. So you're talking about topic A, and then you move into topic B, and then topic C. You can put timestamps so that if your audience isn't interested in one of those topics, they can quickly click the button and jump to the next one. And that's nice for people that are cherry picking through your episode and picking up what they want to hear. If you want to avoid using timestamps, 
then maybe make episodes that are standalone episodes without multiple topics so that your listener doesn't have to jump around or ignore topics that don't interest them. Bust them out. If you have multiple topics, bust them out into smaller episodes. And maybe that'll help you with your content. Okay? So timestamps are great. Um, They give you a chance to jump around in the podcast and go to the sections that mean the most to you as a listener. Number three, your guest information. Provide a short introduction or a bio from your guest. I love going to my guest's website and grabbing their bio right there. That's what they want people to know about them. Simple, super easy. Um, Any kind of highlight any of their expertise or whatever relates to the topic of the episode that you have them on as a guest. Number four, resources and links. So in your show notes, you can include relevant resources, articles, books, websites that you've mentioned, and uh, in the episode, you can even hyperlink them. Number five would be your call to action. And you're going to hear people say, CTA is a lot because apparently call to action just takes a lot of time to say. But anyways, your CTAs, call to actions, um, could also be included in your show notes, your show description, whatever, your episode description, however you want to call this, but I'm calling them show notes. Um, And this is where you can ask your listeners to, to subscribe or leave a review on your episode, or if you're doing show notes for your guest. Uh, where to find your guest for more information. Number six, your keywords and your SEO optimization. So as you do the first five that we've already mentioned, make sure you're putting in searchable words and terms that people would come to a search engine to type that could potentially lead your listener to your podcast. So if you're doing an episode around um, fixing your car, And it's all around oil changes. For example, you want to get oil change, automobile, um, auto maintenance. Those words need to find their way naturally into what you've done in the first five points that we've already talked about. Put searchable terms in there, in the natural flow of your conversation and what you're writing, not just a list of words, but blend it into what you're saying in the first five things we've talked about, okay? So your keywords and anything that people would search for, make sure you're using rich descriptions as you type out and share the information about your show. Number seven, you want to think about the formatting and the readability of what you're presenting in your show notes, okay? Make it make your show notes super easy to read. This is really important. You can use subheadings and bullet points, really short, concise paragraphs. Remember, this is a summary. This is just going to give enough information to be found through a search engine. But also, as your listener looks at this episode and goes, is this for me? Is there content in here that I need or that I'm going to look forward to hearing about? That's what you need. Okay. Number eight, any branding And all that needs to be consistent. So maintain consistency in the formatting and the style to align with your podcast brand. Okay. You want to keep that branding strong all the way through your show notes so that your listener has a consistent experience as they go through from episode to episode and takes in your content. Number nine, this is the episode transcript. And I'm going to make a separate episode about this in particular, but one thing people are wrestling with right now is, do I provide a full transcript of everything that's happened in the podcast, which can get difficult if you have multiple people as an interview-based podcast, different voices, people talking over each other, makes it difficult. But people are debating right now whether to put a full transcript or a partial transcript to improve accessibility and searchability. But I'm going to do a different episode because I want to go into this a little bit more and bring in my my friend to kind of talk about his perspective on this. Okay, and so lastly, number 10, any cross-promotion or related episodes. This is a great place. So like for me, I've I've had a guest come on and then later come back 
in a future episode. And then I'm able to link the two episodes together so that you can kind of see they were writing their book the first day they came on my show, and now the book is launched. So the two episodes really go well together. So keep that in mind as you do this cross promotion, right? And, or if there's a related topic, so you have guest A comes on to talk about this and guest B has the same topic to talk about. Maybe you can link those two episodes together to give your audience a good experience, especially if the episode you're linking to is in the past. And maybe your new listener who finds you today might, might enjoy going back in time and listening to this other episode that complements or bookends the con content that you're sharing in this episode. So lots of things to consider as you design and work out your show notes. But by following best practices, your show notes will engage your audience, improve your discoverability, which is really important. You want to be discovered and enhance the overall listening experience of your podcast. Now, here's my offer. I would love to see your show notes. Send me it in an email. Just copy it and paste it into an email and send it to me and ask me what, what I think as I read it. And I'll let you know. I'll give you some feedback. But don't be afraid to do this. Like, it's really easy. It doesn't cost anything. And if it's nice sometimes just to get an extra set of eyes. And I know that I personally am really working through my show notes for all seven of my shows because I want my listeners to have um, a great experience and I want people to find the show because my guests come on and give up so much time um, to come on and be a part of the show. I want people to find their content as well. So that's kind of some thoughts around show notes and I would love to hear your feedback. Go over to howtopodcast.ca and I would love to get your, your feedback through SpeakPipe or email. Tell me about your show notes. What are you doing what do you like? What is what do you what did you stop doing? And let's just talk about show notes and get your ideas as well. Thanks for listening to the How to Podcast series, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Get out there and do some podcasting. <laughs>